Okay, here we go. This is my newest uh, addition to my lathe turning stuff. This is a new eccentric truck by uh, Jean-Francois Escalon, the Escalon truck. It's uh, very interesting and very different than most of his most of the other trucks in that it's uh, you can turn off axis and then you can also rotate the piece on the axis that you've turned off on, if that makes any sense. So first off, that's in the normal um, straight ahead mode that's uh, straight as can be and it's got weights on the back so you can see it's uh, well balanced right now and turning beautifully well it should it's in the middle it's a cup chuck so what you do is you take this gauge that comes with the chuck and uh, it's this biggest size here a 40 millimeter and you turn a 40 millimeters tenon on, on a piece of wood and then you jam it in there a little bit of water on the piece of wood seems to help but uh, slides in easier and then the wood swells a bit and makes a very good solid uh, connection there so that's not a problem so <clears throat> what you do if you want to change the axis of the turning is you put in your spindle lock <clears throat> and then you take this wrench and you loosen that you don't have to tighten this down very tight and then you move this out however far you want and then you tighten this up. Make sure that you've got at least one of these three bolts on the side uh, tight. So once you've done that, then I just moved a little bit, I didn't move it a lot there. I do my spindle lock. And now you'll see there'll be quite a bit of vibration because you know things aren't I guess you can't really see it in the pictures, but uh, here I'll speed the lathe up. to 1500 and you see by that wrench there things are kind of shaking around but this is the beauty of the chuck here you can turn it off axis like that and then you come in the back here let's move the camera around here and show you come in the back here and you can see hopefully that there's these two bolts here and in behind in that are two weights so again I'm going to put spindle lock on so it doesn't move around and then this right now is zero you can see the marks on there and so I've moved the chuck I've moved the uh, I've moved the wood and the, and the cup chuck in that direction so I'm going to move the weights in the opposite direction so you come to the 10 millimeter wrench and you just slide this up a little bit this you got to kind of practice and figure it out, you know, play it by ear a bit. Of course, the further you go, the further it's going to be turned. So now I'll undo the spindle lock again. We'll see how balanced that is. There. But, you see the wrench is not moving at all now. Now it's smooth. Well, not smooth as silk, but it's pretty darn smooth compared to how it was. So that's how that works. And then the next thing that you can do, you see, see how much longer it takes to slow down even, is once you've got this off center, you can turn. So you put a groove or something like that in here. Right in here. So you cut, cut, cut. And then you decide, okay, I want to change a little bit. So then you loosen off these screws here. And then See, I've got this labeled number one, and that's a zero there. So then I can turn this however many I want. Let's say I want to just turn it. There's 12 indentations on this, so I just turned it one, two, three. So I guess that's a quarter of the way around. That's like a quarter turn. So then you tighten these up again. These don't have to be really tight. This cup is very, very hard steel, so you don't have to crank down on these. Just a nice light. And then you can turn again. Maybe I'll show you that instead of cutting because it would kind of be in the way. I can show you with a uh, felt tip marker or something like that. How's that? You can see, you know, I'll turn the lathe on even. Magic marker. So you can see the mark is only there. So then if I, again, loosen these three screws off, 
Jean Francois told me that you really only need one, but my luck, one of them will go flying around the room somewhere. So then I'm going to move it again. Uh, one, two, three. That'll give me another quarter turn. And I'll put my marker in a different spot here. Now you can see where I'm cutting has changed. So I'll move it again. I'll move one, two, three. Say those don't have to be super tight. You know, it's very hard steel. Oh, put a different. So again, you can see I've got a, a different mark going there. You can see how this goes around. One more time, just to complete the sequence. One, two, three. We're actually back to where we started, but on the first time I didn't put a mark on there, so you can see what's going on. I'll put a fourth mark on there. And you can see, fortunately this piece of wood is not exactly round all the way down here, but you can see there's the first mark, the second mark, the third mark, and the fourth mark. Now, if you can get your head around some eccentric turning, that gives you a huge range of possibilities. And of course, even once you do that, you could then, of course, if you wanted to, you could grab the spanner again. Again, this doesn't have to be super tight, just, you know, and you could move the whole thing out again. Tighten it up. That's going to probably hit the tool rest now. Yeah, so I'm going to move that. But then you see you could move the axis again and you could do some more cuts if you wanted to. Now, of course, when, once you do that, it's going to throw everything off balance, as you can probably see when I turn it on here. Well, actually, to be honest, it's a bit smoother than it was, so my weights weren't quite exactly on, on, on the spot. But, anyways, that's the chuck. Um, it's extremely well made. The quality on it is just top drawer. I've got some uh, Nova chucks here, and this certainly, I think, is probably easily as good, if not better, quality. Uh, it's made in France. Uh, I got this from Jean when he was in Japan here doing a demonstration, and uh, uh, he, uh, his, the lathe that we're using here in Japan had the 33 and a half uh, thread on it. My lathe's got one and uh, a quarter by eight, so I had to get the adapter here, but. Uh, Otherwise, it works uh, just fine. You know, normally, you wouldn't have this piece in there. But actually, I don't mind it in there because it gives you a little bit of room from the headstock. The other thing that came with that's really cool is uh, Jean, Jean Francois gave me this, and uh, being the fantastically nice guy that he is. And this is an accessory that you can buy in addition to the chuck. You can see how that holds in there. The grub screws go into that groove there. Anyways, this is a faceplate. You can see a nice little faceplate that you can also put in here. So when you put the faceplate in there, of course, screw it onto a nice piece of wood, like uh, some kind of a, a bowl or a platter or a plate. You can uh, imagine the eccentric turnings that you could get on the face of some faceplate turnings. It uh, again opens up a whole realm of possibilities. So that's about it. Um, I think it's a fantastic thing. I've, I've Got to admit, I still got to get my head around it a little bit. It's uh, it's it's a little bit mind blowing the possibilities that this brings up that you could possibly do. And to me, the sweetest part about this is because of the weights on the back that you can move, and you can when you turn off axis, you can move those weights so that it makes things very smooth. Normally, when you're turning off axis, uh, things kind of get wobbly, kind of in a in a hurry, and you end up having to slow your lathe down quite a bit. But with this, you can maintain a good speed. Most of us have been doing around 1500 RPM, and with a little bit of tweaking, you could probably e easily uh, go above that for you know, spindle turning anyways. So I think it's a fantastic addition. Um, 
It's not really on the market yet. I think that if you get hold of Jean-Francois directly, you can probably get it. I haven't seen any of the catalogs yet, but uh, I think this is going to be a, uh, anybody who likes eccentric off-axis turning, I think this is going to be a must-have. Okay, thank you very much.